Now joining us on the guest line, the UFC's number one ranked welterweight contender. And according to almost everyone in the MMA world and beyond, not named Tyron Woodley, a really damn good guy, too. Steven Wonderboy Thompson is with us. WB, as Ray Longo calls him. What's up, man? What's up, my brother? How you doing? We're doing well, man. Thank you for the time. I know you've been making the media rounds over the last 36 hours or so. We'll get to this rematch with Tyron Woodley, but the Clemson Tigers won college football's national championship game last night. So we know you're the proud South Carolina native. And as we remind you every time you're on this show, Kenny Florian, of course, married into a South Carolina <laughs> family. So, I mean, did you grow up Tigers, Gamecocks? Seems like everybody in South Carolina is celebrating, though, today. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, if it's, you know I, was, I wasn't really a big, big football fan. My brother played college football. I was either, you know, I had friends that went to USC, had friends that went to Clemson, you know, so I kind of went back and forth. But, you know, my hat's off to Clemson and Tigers. They did, they did uh, Simpson or, or South Carolina proud. They sure did. And you have certainly done your state proud as well. You'll try to get that UFC title from Tyron Woodley. It's been announced main event UFC 209 March 4th in Las Vegas. Man, this rivalry is really intensified. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, of course, after the the uh, the last fight, you know, he even said we had some unfinished business. But as the days went on and the months went on, uh, you know, uh, he started talking about everybody else but me. And um, you know, I, Sunday I kind of put out on Twitter a, a picture of me and him with both hand with both of our hand raised and a signed contract that I had signed, and I uh, said, "Hey, man, we're waiting on you." So that got everybody talking, and uh, I think it did enough for him to actually. Because I know he had the contract sitting in front of him, uh, did enough to get him to sign that contract, and here we are, man, getting ready to fight March fourth. Stephen, how, how did you see that fight? How did you score it round by round? Well, I know for a fact he won the first and the fourth round. I felt that one I won the second, third, and the fifth round. Um, the ten eight, obviously, in the fourth, uh, and ended up knocking me down twice, had me in a deep guillotine that I ended up getting uh, getting out and. Finished, uh, I think, a minute 30 on top throwing punches and um, even did enough to where I helped him up that last, uh, that fourth round. <laughs> um, but you know what? You know, a draw is a draw. And, um, you know, I, I, it definitely wasn't me. I didn't throw a whole lot of things uh, I should have out there. A little hesitant and uh, something that we're definitely working on, um, you know, as we go into this March 4th fight. So you're going to see a different Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. You know, that's how I scored the fight. I saw the, the fight in the same way. I thought it was a draw, and I saw those rounds the same way. But what do you need to do in this fight? What's going to be the, the difference in your approach? I know you said you, you, you didn't pull the trigger as much as you'd like, but uh, what specifically do you need to do against someone like Tyron to, to make sure you get the win? Well, you know, he, he's, he's a big 170. Uh, the last time I fought him, I was walking around about 182. Uh, cut the weight. Only when I rehydrated, I only got back up to 178. So I was I was definitely too small out there, especially with a big guy like him. So walking around heavier, even though it, it'll be a more dramatic cut, but uh, I know I can do it. Um, so walking around a little bit heavier and just like I said, just letting the trigger go, man. Just let my hands go. I was a little hesitant out there. Um, didn't throw the kicks, the angles, working the angles that I normally do. Um, I don't know if it was the fact that you know it was the biggest card in UFC history and it was a title fight. And, I don't know what it was. Don't let it make excuses. I did what I did, and I know I can, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a better fighter than what you guys uh, saw me um, uh, on the fifth, so, or, so UFC 205. Um, but uh, brought some really good guys in. I'm more confident going into this fight. I know what he's capable of. I know he's a strong wrestler. Um, he's got a mean right hand, obviously, he hit me with. Um, so I've got to watch out for that. He's not the type of guy that actually makes a dramatic changes in his camp. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to be a little more aggressive this fight. But other than that, pretty much the same. Uh, are you are you happy with this kind of turnaround, Stephen? I am, man. I mean, I, I don't mind it at all. I'm all healed up. Uh, I've been training since early uh, December uh, when I got the contract uh, and signed it. And uh, like I said, just waiting on him, I'm, I was back in the, uh, in the camp um, ready for March 4th. So I feel great, man. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson with us here on the Anakin Florian podcast. So I saw you pushed out some tweets, and I thought you did a good job with it. One of the hashtags, I think, was anybody but Wonderboy sort of insinuating, and you've touched on this several times over the last few weeks, that he'd rather fight other guys and, and recognizes how dangerous you are. Certainly a name like Nick Diaz brings a certain cachet with it. Michael Bisping has a championship belt. But do you believe in Woodley's heart he thinks those are easier stylistic matchups and thereby fights for him than, than rematching you? Well, I think he's just looking for the money fight, to be honest with you. I mean, I know he's a champion, and um, 
I think I, I think he knows that it wasn't it wasn't really uh, the best Stephen Winterboy Thompson in the last fight, and um, you know, it seemed to me like he was talking about everybody else but me. That's why I kind of put that tweet out there last Sunday. Got everybody, um, um, you know, talking about us again, you know, and it was just enough to get him to sign that 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 about agreement again. But uh, I don't know. I don't think it would be. Any, I don't think he thinks it's an easier fight. I just think he's looking for a big money fight. So Which, he, you know, did... if it was me as a champion, you know, I wouldn't want to ride on anybody else's coattails to, to to make it a money fight. Man, you know, work hard. You know. Uh, knock some people out, and you be the money fight. It seems like you've really struck a nerve with him, and I'm not sure if this rivalry has sort of intensified beyond what you thought it could be when you first signed the bout agreement to fight him back at UFC 205. On his podcast, The Morning Woods Show, here's a quote. From this point forward, I'm going to commit to taking this dude out in the most embarrassing and worst fashion. This is a new fight, so he's trying to put the other one in the rearview mirror. The most important fight of my life, not only to just continue to be the champion and to keep my belt, I can't allow myself to lose to him and what he stands for and what his fans stand for and this overly entitled group of individuals who are in mixed martial arts. So most who know you think that really flies in the face of the truth. Why do you think he's gone down this path, and what do you think is the sort of root or genesis of his comments? Well, to be honest with you, I don't get to where he feels like I'm entitled. I didn't beg for this fight. They gave me the contract. You know, uh, early December, I just got the contract. I signed it. Didn't didn't ask for any more money. Uh, just signed the contract and sent it back. You know what I mean? If anybody's entitled, he is. He feels he's entitled uh, for these other bigger money fights or, or whatnot. I, I just don't get it. I don't get where he feels like there's not an entitled bone in my body. Um, so I, I don't understand where he's coming from, man, but uh, it definitely struck a nerve with him, and uh, I've gotten under his skin, which, um, you know, I don't mind that at all. There he is, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, once again challenging Tyron Woodley for the UFC Welterweight Championship. That's your headliner, UFC 209. Saturday, March 4th in Las Vegas, Wonder Boy. I know we speak for the masses when we say you certainly deserve this rematch, and we wish you the best with it. We'll see you in Vegas, if not sooner, man. Thanks for breaking away for us today. Anytime, my friend. I appreciate it. You guys have a good one. You too. All right, Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson with us here on the Anakin Florian podcast. TJ, I want to cue up this audio now from the Morning Wood Show, Tyron Woodley, Dean Thomas. You heard Wonderboy say there that he's totally fine with the fact that he has gotten under Tyron Woodley's skin. We'll let you be the judge. Let's hear what Tyron had to say earlier this week on the Morning Wood Show. Wonderboy, you want it? Come get it. You want to fight? You want to get done worse than you did the first time? Like, like some people got to be real careful. Like, war, like you can lift weights. You can gain weight. You can take a weight casing, mix, blend, protein shake three or four times a day. It don't matter. You're not going to make up for 20 years of wrestling. You're not going to make up for sheer athleticism, power, conditioning, mindset, and hunger. Those things that are just in you. You can't make that up in six weeks. So he's going to get in the octagon, and he's going to be in for a rude awakening because if he thought that was something the last time, I'm going all the way up. Kenny, we both know Tyron Woodley very well. It's interesting to hear him get this sort of animated and and the reason we didn't play that for Wonder Boys because I thought he touched on a lot of the things that he might have commented on after the fact I'm sure he's gotten wind of some of these quotes but Kenny Tyron um getting into a war of words no doubt about it here with Wonder Boy yeah I think Tyron is a little upset um at Wonder Boy um with some of the things he he was doing and I think Tyron was looking for a different fight not because he doesn't want to fight Wonder Boy but I think he wanted a big money fight I know the Tyron's been in hot pursuit of that. Um, but, yeah, I also think he's trying to get in Wonder Boy's head, saying, you're not going to be stronger than me. It doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to be bigger than me. Um, you can't stop me from taking you down. He's trying to put all those uh, ideas of doubt in Wonder Boy's head now, just giving him the warning and, and telling him, it doesn't matter what you do, man. You're going to lose. I got this. And, you know, those are kind of tactics that, that can work, especially considering, you know, the kind of damage he took um, uh, against Woodley. So um, I think Tyron's doing a good job of hyping this fight up. I think Wonder Boy as well. Uh, both these guys want this fight. And, uh, you know, if it's as good as the first one, we're in for a treat. Yeah, I mean, that could have been a fight of the year candidate for sure in 2016. And we'll see how the pay-per-view does. I think you're right. I think they're both doing a good job selling this fight. They both have styles that naturally I think will sell a fight. It's during the football offseason, which is a good thing. 
not too busy on the on the sports calendar. I think March Madness is still 10 days or so away. So we'll see what they can do. UFC 209, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Tyron Woodley. Thanks to uh, Wonderboy and, and his management team for, for setting that up today.